the pixie first of all as i'm waiting for people to come on it's it's there's so many ways to cut it guys what we do know it's a short haircut and what we do know is there's so many variations of a pixie out there so there's no one variation so i know you want to walk away with some learning here i respect what you do in terms of what you do with pixie now so i'm not here to say that what you're doing is the wrong way or the incorrect way what I want to do is just give you another way, another way to think about it, another way to look at it, and possibly another way to do that. And the reason being, guys, I don't know about you, but I continue to talk about how I want to find as many ways as I can to do something just so it keeps me motivated, stimulated, especially for you at the chair. So that's important. When I think about the pixie, I said it's short. We know it's short. Yet, can it have length? Of course it can have length. I've seen some pixies where they may have been about two inches long. So it just depends upon the softness, the degree of softness that you want. Length will determine degree of softness. The shorter it is, the shorter hair is, the more natural movement takes over. The longer hair is, the more gravity takes over. So those are two things to consider when you're going in and you're talking or cutting a pixie. Next thing to consider is always the facial shape and the personality. In other words, <clears throat> I really like to read the personality. If I have someone that's inked, extremely inked, and they are dressed very modern or very outside the border, wow, that's a personality I could probably push it a little bit. If I have a woman that's sitting in my chair that's more in a business suit, then I know that pixie needs to be a little bit softer. So I think these are things to think about when you think of pixie, but there's so many out there, variations and looks. Let's talk a little bit about about the evolution of the pixie. The, in the late 20s, in the 20s, short hair became part of mainstream. And a lot of women out there were starting to cut their hair short. Think of uh, flappers and things like that. Uh, then when we take it, what really made it pop was in the 50s. In the 1950s, there was a movie called Roman Holiday. And that was with Audrey Hepburn. And she had a little bit more of a really cloth type of pixie, but it was short, so it fit that pixie category. In the 60s, that's when it went really huge. Let's call it now maybe viral, if you want to call it that. In those days, it didn't happen. But it went mainstream. And it went mainstream because in the 60s, there was, let's see, there was a movie in the 60s, Rosemary's Baby. And that was Mia Farrow. And then I think of Twiggy, of the model Twiggy. And that's when it really hit. The evolution of the Pixie was just, poof, it exploded. Then, once again, an uh, icon in the music industry that maybe some of you like, I enjoy her, that's Madonna. In the 80s, Madonna cut it off, and she was wearing a pixie. And I think that's when it started to really catch on and start to become more modern. Now we find that a lot of our clients are cutting their hair off. Let's talk about the evolution of that and why I tend to believe that that started to happen. It started to happen with these pixies because clients were wearing their hair long. And you know that they wanted to grow everything along because they wanted a balayage, balayage, balayage. And in order to get that, you need to have length up on the top. And then you had to curl it in order for that color to just really kind of like work itself together. Now, I'm not a colorist, okay? And I'm not saying that that's wrong because it's a beautiful, beautiful color. Yet I remember telling my friends that I teach with at the Redkin Artist Network, I said, guys, I'm going to start layering here. I'm going into shags. So I told him, so I'm going to be taking this short on the top, so you better be prepared and ready for that. So now what are you going to do with your color? So now they figured out ways they can still balayage and do that. But trends and things change. Just as the seasons change outside, so we need to change. So today, let's go through and let's talk and let's discover Pixie. I'm going to start from the beginning to end. So here's the setup. A client came back. You've reopened your salon. She came back. She cut her hair herself. And she said, you know what? I'm so tired of this. I find myself extremely busy now, Sam. I want to go completely off. And then we talk about how short. She said, I want it really short. Okay, let's talk about a pixie. Now, remember what I said earlier, degree of softness is based upon length. 
So here's a client that I have that I've cut throughout this uh, whole time that we've had time off. And what I did was just basically layer this. I kept the front long. Now she's back and she says, Sam, cut it off. My life is so busy. So let's cut it off. So what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about the sectioning. So I'm going to move these girls out of the way. And these are variations of pixels that I was talking about. Take a look at this one. Okay. So you can see this one has what's called an undercut. Okay. An undercut to me would be scissor over comb. That would be an undercut. Okay. Then what we've been doing is we would drop hair over these. Now, Sam, who should really be wearing a pixie? If there's anybody that should be wearing a pixie, it's the mature women that want to cut their hair short. Those are the ones that you can detach or disconnect underneath because of the simplicity. Simplicity is today's brilliance. So now take a look. This one has a little bit more rawness to it in terms of color placement and in terms of length that we have in the front. So it's all about just personality when you take a look at that. Okay, let's set her off to the side. Let's take a look at another one. This one here is a little bit more of a geometric, but still has that kind of pixie appeal to it when I look at this. But the idea, once again, is still short. Now, take a look at this one. That has a little bit more of an underlayer, meaning an underlayer to me is where there's a little bit more length to it. It's not necessarily scissor over comb. So we have an undercut and we have an underlayer. Now, this is, has length over it, and then once again, color placement, but then look at, look at the French. That has a little bit more of a geometric feel to it in regards to this particular pixie. Okay. Now, this one is the one that I cut uh, for The Show Must Go On. If you were with us for The Show Must Go On, this is the one that I cut. And I used a circular pattern and detached those circular patterns underneath, and then I went with a – this was all – Cut with a razor up on top, I believe, from short to long, short to long, short to long, short to long, which is a really cool way to cut that, too. So lots of ways to cut it, but this is what I did when the show must go on. So now let's take a look at some sectioning and how I'm going to section today versus how I sectioned when we did the show goes on. So let's take a look at this. Okay, What I simply did was I'm going to work with a horseshoe section today. Horseshoe section has become so traditional in terms of when we're working with tops and we're working with any type of detachment. By the way, detachment, disconnection. Listen to the verbiage. Okay. What I did was I'm going to take a section, a solid line, and I'm going to use our vertical transition. So I'm going to place the comb vertical where it transitions from vertical to horizontal. That's exactly where I'm going to take my section. So where I see that. So if I'm looking at this, take a look at this. I said, let's take a black comb and place it here so you can get it, see the background of that. You see where the comb comes off? If I slide my finger there, that's telling me that's where the head changes directions, where it moves from a vertical position and it starts to round itself off. Now, Sam, do I ever vary? Do you ever find yourself varying this position? At, like, do you ever find yourself when you're working with this where you change the section, meaning that you lower it or you raise it high? Can anybody answer that for me out there? There's one word in particular I'm looking for. Okay. I uh, love you and how you teach face for a pixie cut. That okay? Yeah. You know, I think it's so important that you understand facial features. That once again, I was talking about that in terms of length. In terms of softness, degree of softness. Maybe you might want to leave something in terms of when people tend to be a little bit more wider. Anytime I see a horizontal, let me give it to you the easiest way I can give it to you. <laughs> Anytime I see a horizontal line, oh, there we go, Sam. Anytime I see a horizontal, horizontal line and facial structure, I immediately think diagonal. So I make the path of the eye travel diagonally, or I think vertically. So I make the path of the eye travel vertically. So when cutting a pixie, maybe you might want to leave something a little bit longer here, but short above that, a little longer tendrils, so that it draws the path of the eye. I've seen that hair draws the path of the eye down. Something as simple as that. So if I take a look at somebody's eyes, for example, and the eyes offset. Or you see it like this. So if this eye is is if this eye is lower, excuse me, higher, and this eye over here is lower, then I know that what I want to do is I want to take the hair from over here and I want to make it come up and over to the opposite side. That way, what I do is I'm taking let's take her and face it. If this eye is lower and this eye is higher, then what's happening is if I take the hair this direction here, like this to the side, and do that. I'm pushing the eye, this eye down, because it gives the path of the eye following the hair, pushes that down. So if that's lower and this is higher, then I want to take the hair this direction. 
So it gets the path of the eye, lifting that eye and closing this back down. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me on that in terms of if you just learned something, just throw a heart at me or something. But I think that's so important. So here's what I want you to understand. Give the client the why in terms of why you're going to leave length where you're going to leave it or why you're going to take it a certain direction. When you give them the why, their head starts to do, mm, you seem to know what you're talking about. Why don't you just do whatever you want? So that's important, guys. Remember that. All right. So once again, okay, you need to hold your head still, my dear. The more you move the head, the more mistakes I'm going to make. All right. So here we go. Place the comb in. There's where it comes off. I take a horizontal slice. Now, I want you to watch where I'm, what I'm going to do with this. And I just keep myself a horizontal curve line working all the way around. Now, I'm using a tail comb in this particular case because I'm going to express something to you. I want to show you something. All right. So let's just get this up and out of the way. And now, once I have this all lifted up, because I want this pixie, if you were with me, I cut the pixie with, a, I believe, with a... Uh, a uh, Texture shear all the way through. Today I'm going to work with a blunt shear and show you some other things. But I think what I want to do here is I want to come through on the side area here and I want to take more of a zigzag section. And I'm going to take a zigzag section because that zigzag section is going to give me more of a deconstructed shape, a deconstructed edge when it falls. If I sometimes take a solid line and you're detaching this top, sometimes you're going to have a weight line there depending upon how you graduate or how you layer the hair. So in this particular case, what I, I want to do is I'm going to come through. You can see where I have my line, but what we're going to do is we're going to take it from here and we're just going to zigzag that. So I drew a solid line because what I wanted to see was I wanted to get my balance. So what I'm not doing is I'm not coming here and immediately drawing the, the, the uh, zigzag line in. I'm drawing a solid line in first. That sets up my balance. Then come back and use your tail comb to go in and you and create the zigzag. Now, how much you zig and how much you zag? Just like my man Jason Linares said from Nashville, Tennessee, the zig and the zag depends upon how much weight, how much length you want to throw somewhere, and how much less length you want to throw. So I'm going to go kind of like medium because I know I'm going to cut this short. So see, I just zigzag over that line with the tail comb, and then see this will give me a consistent zig and a consistent zag as I'm working through. And then all you do is just follow your line all the way around. Okay. So I love working with zigzag sections when I want more of a deconstructed shape. Now, Sam, are there any other particular times, I'm just using a tail comb to section, are there any particular times when you find that you might want to go in and zigzag? Yes. When I'm working with natural curly hair and they blow dry their hair straight, then I would suggest you cut it with zigs and zags. And the reason being is because, once again, you're going to get much more of a deconstructed shape. And that's critical when you go through and you're working with natural curly hair. Natural curly hair is another class in its own. Another class in its own. Go back and look at our archives and you'll find our video, Curlicious, and you'll also find a segment that I did on the do's and don'ts of natural curly hair. All right. Now, I'm just going to isolate this. Okay. Now, a lot of times people out there say, well, I don't preception. All right. I'm pre-sectioning this so that I can visually see my balance, and I know I'm going to detach that top from the bottom. So zig and zag, and then make sure you ch just check your balance as you go through, and just make sure you check that balance. Now, I'm going to start on my right side, because her right side, which might look if you reverse it. I'm going to start on her right side, okay? And the reason I'm starting on her right side is because I'm right-handed. I'm not a believer in starting on my weak side and working into that. I might challenge myself once in a while as an exercise, but I really feel set up your success and your confidence and then work your way around. We'll talk about one way, one side to the other. Is the zig actually better for fine hair? For fine hair, you want weight. So if you're going to zig and zag, I suggest you make them kind of thick because you want some weight on fine hair. You can still go through and you can layer it out, but on fine hair, you have to understand, my friends, let the fabric tell you what you can do and what you can't do. I'm, if you fall in love with a technique and you apply it to every fabric, it's not necessarily meant from every, for every fabric. That's my point. All right. I'm going to work with a white comb on dark hair. And the reason I'm working on this is because this way I can see the angle that I'm cutting. Now, you can't see that because of the background in the back. So, so that you can see what I'm working with, I'm going to move to a black comb. So you're able to see that. 
And I think it's so important that you have some type of transition when you're working in terms of the background, you know, so you're able to see. So that's why you find us making dark combs, white combs, and black combs only. All right. Now, there's a long one and there's a short one. I'm going to work with a short one today, okay, because I'm working with a short haircut. All right. Now, here we go. The sheer of my choice I'm going to work with today. I'm going to work with our shorter swivel. And the reason I'm choosing to do that is because I'm working with the 5.50 is because my, I'm working with a shorter haircut. So the length of the blade will determine what you're doing, especially when we're cutting fringes. And go back on our videos and you'll see that. All right. So let's chat about what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to sketch that out for you here. All right. I'm going to take just a slightly, let's turn our profile so you can see the section I'm going to take. Forget the fact that you're working with a zigzag section. Okay, that's going to complement what we're going to do on the top. Okay, what you want to do is just pretend this is solid and just stay very disciplined as you're working through this. Now, I'm going to give you a little technique. I don't know about you, but what happens is, is that when you get back to salon, you want to save yourself some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from just at about top of the ear, I'm going to take another horizontal section here. Okay, now on this one here, I'm not going to zigzag. I'm going to leave that pretty solid. But what I'm going to do first is I want to eliminate this underneath. And this underneath, I know I want this a little bit shorter than what I'm going to take the back area and that side area. So I just want to go through and get this off. When I go through and get this off, I'm going to work with a blending shear. Okay. And I'm going to work with a blending shear and just get that off. I find number one, simple. Number two, speed. It saves me time. And I think when you get back in the salon, that's one of the things that what's really going to be important is you utilizing your time in a very good manner in terms of not sacrificing quality, but understanding, allow me to find something that works just as effective that it's going to allow me to get there just as quick. By using a blending shear, it's going to keep the soft, the edge very soft as I work. Now, notice how I'm going through and I'm even eliminating my length. I've got the blunt blade on the bottom because that way the teeth aren't at the bottom. I'm lifting that hair up. And then I just come through and I just open and close. Now look how quickly I'm getting and releasing that. Then if you want, after I've done this, sometimes I find myself coming back in and picking up a blunt shear and just clean the edge. Now watch how I'm going to work scissor over comb. So I just come through, scissor over comb, back down, continually moving as I'm opening and closing. So when you take a look at this, if you looked at this from a profile view, you would see that when I go to close this, that hair is elevated a diagonal position above a horizontal line. So when I look at this, that's horizontal. But that hair, when I close, it's elevated here. So that when it collapses, it falls softer and it's not falling with any steps. If you're learning something, just give me a yes. Okay, I'm going to throw little tidbits at you. Okay. So as I go through, and I just love the blending shear when I'm working with short hand. A lot of sometimes people go, you're cheating. <laughs> I didn't know you could cheat. So, but I find that simplicity is today's brilliance. You know, keeping things simple in today's world is really what it's about. Yet most importantly, do what's going to work for you, my friends. I'm not here and we're not here at the Sanvia brand to tell you what's right, what's wrong. We want to compliment you as many ways and give you things to think about and other ways to approach. All right, so now take a look how I've gotten that length off, okay? And you can see just by simply working scissor over comb, I've been able to get a really nice soft edge. Now let's go through. Now we'll release. Now we're going to go back to the front and start in that front area. Now, as I work from the front to the back, I find that sometimes I get so much weight here in the center, and I find myself sometimes going in and back in and taking that weight off horizontally. Watch how I'm going to share with you a crisscross pattern in terms of eliminating that weight in the center. What blending shear do you use for this? Lindsay, thanks for asking, my dear. I work with a reversible blender. Okay? You can find that at Salon Centric or State RDA or go to our website. But I'm working with a reversible blending shear. Some people call it a thinning shear. At Sanvia, we refer to it as a blending shear. And the reason being, if I say thinning shear, tends to scare people. So things change in terms of our terminology also. All right, slight diagonal forward. Watch the clip. The clip is going to go up. The clip is faced up so it captures the hair. I'm going to give you a view of this straight on so that you can see the degree of elevation. Look at my elevation. 
so you can see here. I'm going to work with a black comb today so you can see it up against the black of uh, the white background. Normally, I'd be working white on the color of hair. So here's where I'm at, okay? So I'm going to elevate that horizontally. Now let's talk about that's the elevation. Now let's talk about the way that I'm going to over-direct this. And what I mean by over-direction, over-direction is simply this. Elevation, up and down. Over direction, I've elevated it here. Now I have a chance to move it forward or I have a chance to move it back. If I move it forward, I'm throwing more weight and length towards the back. If I move it back, then I'm throwing more weight and length towards the front. Next thing I need to think about, the next move we need to think about is our finger angle. Now my finger angle, if you can see it, take a look at it, it's just slightly at a diagonal. It's not here. It's not straight up and vertical. And the reason I want slightly diagonal is I just want this to have a little bit more weight on the top, and it's just going to give me a little bit more movement to it. So I'm going to overdirect slightly to each previous section. So I'm gradually getting just slightly longer. It's going to give me a little more movement. Okay, here we go. Let's elevate. Notice how I'm holding the comb. So I'm holding the comb from the wide teeth up. I'm not going to do what I traditionally do like this because now look at my elbow. So hold the comb there. Now let go. Now come back up and just grab it, and you're in a great position. It really helps you to control. Sam, how short do you know to take it, especially if a client's going to panic? All I want you to do is do this. Just simply grab it where you think you might cut it. Push it up. And then when you see that little bevel right there, that little bevel, that's about where I would suggest you cut this. Why? Because if I just let go of that and I cut, watch how that has a little bend. You see how it just bends? So it's not necessarily sticking straight out at you. Remember what I said in the beginning. The shorter something is, the more gravity takes over. Now watch how I'm going to come through. Now I'm going to come through, and I'm going to lift my elbow so you can see. I'll give you a back view in a moment. Okay? Now that's my first section. Now I want this particular pixie uh, here. I took it shorter underneath that back there on the nape, but I want this to have a little bit more length. Now watch how I comb. Let's turn this way so you can actually see how I'm combing this. Okay, here. Okay. All right, now take a look at what I'm doing here. So now just notice, here's the natural fall of that hair. I've elevated it and I just over directed it slightly to the previous section. So that what I'm getting is I'm getting a little bit more length as I move to the back. I wanted you to see that from that view. Now let's continue, okay? And look at my last combing angle. Here's where I clean the hair. Now look at my last combing angle because I'm going to over direct forward my last combing angle is just on the back side, not the front side. And I'm staying right with the guide and coming right through. Now, I could certainly scan this if I wanted to. I think a lot of things. So that's blunt. Let's start scanning. So I probably would have started scanning this in the beginning. What do you mean, Sam? Watch what I'm going to do. Watch how I'll take. I'm working with a swivel because the swivel allows me to place my hand elbow down. And now watch what I'm going to do. All I'm going to do is use the guiding blade on my ring finger and I just come through and scan that. Now that's going to give me a little softer edge as you go through. We've been doing a lot of scanning on a lot of our shapes lately because of the fact of what we're doing in terms of looking for these textured edge. Today let's stay really with discipline. Let's talk a lot about discipline as I'm working. Okay now obviously this is a mannequin. I love working with mannequins. This is our mannequin. Her name is Lydia. You can get this at Pivot Point. Okay. Pivot Point has our, we do mannequins, mannequins, and I love their stands. And I love their stands because, as you can see, I just rotated and it turns. But mannequins are a great resource for you to practice. But what's so important you understand is the mannequin is not going to respond to it like a human. So sometimes it takes things in terms of using your hand like this so you can really just see it in terms of looking how that set, how it sits. Now take a look at the silhouette of that. You can see it's just got that slightly diagonal to it. It just depends, you know, if you want to flatten it out, flatten it out. If you want to build weight, if you want to flatten, flatten out. If you want to build a little weight, you're here. More weight, you're there. So it just depends. You want something with length and softness so you can see how I adjust the movement of my finger angle to create the silhouette. Continuing to move through every section is over directed to the previous. Now, this particular pixie, I'm going to give it a little bit longer than what I did if you were with me with the show goes on, but I also want you to look at my approach to this in terms of how I'm approaching it. Today I'm lifting my elbow so that you can see. Sam, if I didn't want to lift my elbow and I've got a swivel, what would you do? So I would be here and I would be like this with the swivel. You could be here with a swivel. This is what I like about a swivel. It just gives me so many options 
in terms of how I'm working with it. Now, let's get to a critical area that we're talking about here. So what I've been doing is I've been over directing sec the section. Now, as I look down at the knee, that changes. Look at the position of the cone. Okay, so you can start to see, let's go to white comb so you can see it. You can see here what I was doing, but then as I come to the nape area, here, look at the position of the comb, but look at the nape area. So what I'm saying here, it's so important, this is my finger, the black is my finger, that it matches this way. When I was here, I was here. Now watch me turn and position that. So it's important that you follow the shape of the head. So watch as I go through how... Same parallel sections, diagonal back. Disregard, or if you want, you can set up the angle and blend it into what you did down below. Okay, you have a choice there. Now look what I'm doing here. Okay, so see how I come through? Okay, here. So once I'm here now, watch how the comb, give you a back view, look at how much more of an angle that is. Look at that. And that's because the head is starting to change direction. The mistake people make is, I would make this mistake. I would keep the same line all the way down. And it would do this. But what would happen is this, as you can see, is getting longer because the shape of the head starts to bend and curve in. So what we have to understand is start to turn and follow that shape, even though I pre-cut that nape or I've cut that nape underneath. Okay, let's continue through. Let me give you a back view. Any questions, make sure you ask. But let's give you a back view as I'm going through, and that way everything's out of the way. You can see how I'm working. Okay, now watch how I'll keep it there. Why drop this, start to tickle it and play with it and do all that kind of stuff? What I'm going to do is look on, I'm going to place my comb, look at my comb. See how it reads it? Now look at that, that comb. I'm going to go white so you can see here in the hair. So now take a look at that. Now watch me just pick, move my hand parallel to that comb. See, here's where I was. Now watch what you could do. You could do this and you come out and you start to change and you do this. Now what you've done is you've cut a corner of length inside that. This is what I want you to understand in terms of using your comb to determine and locate the shape of the head. And I hope that's making sense, guys. All right, let me give you a little trick here. Sometimes some uh, people, when I teach a hands-on, they'll say that the comb gets in my way, Sam. All right, when you're here, watch how I comb from underneath. I comb from the top. I comb from underneath. I comb from the top. Now watch me eliminate the comb. When the comb gets in your way, all I want you to do is hit the pocket of your thumb and index finger, fold the comb over, and now look how all that comb is out of my way. And once again, under, over, under, over, and cut. Develop a rhythm as you're going through this. All right, let's talk about the section. Any questions out there? You doing good? Just give me a yes if you're learning. Okay. Everybody's good. What is scanning? Diana, okay. Diana, scanning is basically when I'm going in and I am doing this. People may refer to this as point cutting, okay? Point cutting to me is when you're more deeper into it. Scanning, all I'm doing is just look at the edge. I just scan the edge. So rather than cutting a solid blocked line, I'm cutting a little bit more of a softer edge to it. So let me give you a visual on that in terms of what I mean. And let me show you what I'm doing also. So let's take a look at scanning up here. We know that this is a blocked edge. Okay, we know that we can point cut. I can do this. Okay, that's point cutting. Scanning is this. So it's just like it's, you're scanning in a computer. So this has a little bit more weight to it, but the edges are softer. And I find I've discovered, Diana, when I do this, I'm not going back through a haircut and starting to texturize it again so much. Remember, when you get back to salon, time is going to be an issue. So you really got to figure out what gets me to the end result in an effective way, not a gimmick way, gets me to that end result in a quick time of manner, if you will. And I'm not saying speed up the appointment time, guys. I just think, I just want to share with you other ways to approach it. So each block, in each cutting line has a particular purpose. So this would be scanning, okay? That would be point cutting, just a version of it, and that's blocking with a shear, okay? So understand that. That's so important. Let's go to our sectioning now. This is the sectioning, what we just did. Diana, I hope that helps you out there in terms of understanding what's in and what's in. Elevating that up. Okay, excuse my back there for a moment. So I took this. I elevated this up with a blending shear, and I went through, and I just took all this off. Okay? And I want you to do that immediately. It's just about getting the length off, you know? Call it whatever you want, cheating. It doesn't matter to me, but it's effective. 
Okay. Once I did that, then all I did was come in and I came in with a shear with a bl uh, my blending shear. And when working with the blending shear, what we did was we simply took the blending shear and we placed that blunt blade on the bottom and we placed the teeth on the top. Okay, then I just work just like you would scissor over comb, take that underneath off. Okay, that's step one. Okay, now I'm starting to work into this front side area. Okay, so when I work this, look at the elevation on this. Let's stay with the green. Okay, look at the elevation. I want to draw it out today as I go so you can really get the visual. On it. That's how I elevated that with the texture shear, brought it off back down, and you just simply just take all this and just wipe it out. That's what you want to do. Okay. Now, let's go to the area that I'm working on now, which is here. Let's take a look at the over direction, okay? On the over direction, I'm starting the front, and my sections are slightly diagonal back, slightly diagonal back, slightly diagonal back as I go. These are the sections I'm working with, okay? Now, this section was pulled straight out. Next section was over directed to that. That section I cut becomes my guide. That's over directed to that. So we call, I love to call this a traveling guide. That's basically what's happening is all I'm doing is just traveling everything around and everything is over directed that. So as I go through what this does, it gradually gives me a buildup of length towards that back. But as I said, what happens in the back is the idea of it building too much weight in the center. So let's take a look at the section. As I work now, I'm getting towards that back. Watch the back. Okay, so here's our section that we've cut. That's been cut. Okay, now as I come to the back, here's my section. Diagonal back, diagonal back, diagonal back. Now watch me continue into this diagonal back until I get to that center. Once I'm at that center, then you're going to see me come across the opposite side, this way. Now watch what happens. When I do this, this side's already being cut. You see this triangle right here? By crisscrossing these sections like this, you're eliminating all this weight that we have in the center. That's what's so cool about taking this approach in terms of crisscrossing, what I call crisscrossing, you're graduating in the back, okay? Okay, uh, question, uh, Kathy, what if you put your blending shear, the neckline and the calyx, the calyx start to pop up? Option with the calyx, number one, remember what I said, the shorter you take something, the more natural growth takes over. The longer you receive thing, gravity takes over. So that's going to be a creative choice here. What's the choice of the client? Do you want me to wipe that calic out? Yes, it's going to grow back in. You wipe it out again. Or do you want me to leave it long enough that you have some length, but you're going to have to blow dry that with a fine teeth of the comb and a blow dryer so you can control the calic. So, Kathy, there's options there. See, there's no right or wrong answer. It's up to what's the, the end result the client wants to see. So if a client said to me, I don't want to shave this underneath. I don't want to do that with clippers. I've got a cali. Okay, if we don't do that, then you're going to have some maintenance. And the maintenance is I'm going to teach you how to blow dry that down with a fine teeth of the comb. If you don't do that, then it's going to pop up. You see how communications are so critical? It's not just knowing of what to do, but explaining that to a client. Okay, let's get back into the back. Now, here's where I'm going to start to crisscross, okay? So you can start to see. Let's just take a look at the middle. There's my middle. Okay. So let's just crisp get that out of the way. So here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to work just this to the middle. I'm going to work this all the way from the top to the down to the back corner back. When this hits center, my section hits center, that should hit corner back. Now I'm going to come back the opposite way, center to corner back, and you'll see how I'm going to eliminate all the weight. This to me is so important because it makes it so much easier when you're going through and cutting it, okay? I love to work with a cutting lotion. The cutting lotion of my choice is Redkins One United. It has 25 different benefits. I find it the easiest product to sell. Retains moisture while I'm cutting it. It calms frizziness, dryness, static. It's just so many benefits, and that's, once again, One United. Here we go. Okay, let's start to cut some more. Elevate, okay? Look at where I'm at. I'm going to keep my elbow down so you can see. Okay, and then watch how that's going to crisscross as I move to the back. Okay, same section. And then remember what I was saying. Hold that. Once you cut, whenever I would cut a section, I would slowly release it and see what that section does. Let's turn to the center so you can see. Okay. Okay, now I'm coming to that center. Watch. Look at me crisscross. Okay, now let's just take all this at once. 
So now, if that was continuing, I'd be down in the nape area, but following the shape of the head as I'm working. Okay, and notice how I fold. I see my guide. I'm ready to cut. Okay, look at the hand. It didn't release it. Okay, so let's clean. Hand, clean, set up my over direction. Let's just get a little bit more lift out of that from the bottom. So I elevated, I combed underneath. And I'm going to be following the shape of the head. Okay, all the way through. Now, here we go. Watch this. This is my, almost my last section. See, I'm coming to all the way even over to this side. So the point I am trying to make is don't work to center back and then come here. You're going to end up with a point in the center. Just crisscross your sectioning from right side to left and left side to right. What questions we have out there? Have some connecting issues, hope picture will clear up on TV. Okay, Abby, uh, if anybody else is having connection issues, just let us know, but Abby, I'm not sure if that's our end or your end there. Okay, but notice I'm not dropping. See, I didn't drop that. When I get the section completely cut, then come in and tickle and do all you want. I love one of these mannequins. I massage them down so I can see that hair in its natural, natural human position, if you will. Okay, now take a look. Let's straighten you up. Okay, take a look at the head. I'm going to go one more section. Let's see, I've got one more section before I go to center. See that little hair? So I come through. All right, and I follow my guide. Okay, what if you blend your shear to now? Okay, we talked about that. All right, we're doing good. All right, all right, here we go. Here, underneath. Watch me fold. Develop good habits, guys. I think, you know, it's so important that you understand hair cutting happens with consistency. It's cutting with intent and purpose. It's understanding how you're elevating the hair, how you're over-directing the hair, how you're positioning your finger out, angle in. I think those are so, so critical in terms of when you're cutting. Now, look how that took me all the way across. Now, watch. All I'm going to do is start over on this side, working front to back. How many of you out there have an issue of getting one side matched up to the other? If you do, just type in yes and let me know if you do. I'm about to share with you a really, really cool little trick in terms of going in. Our water bottle, okay? I love it just because it missed. You're seeing a lot of these water bottles out there. All right. So now let's go through and let's talk about how do you manage to get one side to look balanced to the opposite side. That was always an issue for me. When I have an opportunity, I love to measure. I'm not one of these guys that does this. And I discovered that because I could not consistently pick up one section at the same exact spot. If I didn't pick it up at the same exact spot, then I would make one longer than the other. Watch my hands. If I'm here and then down here on this side, you can see it, they're not even. And I do this, one side will be shorter, one side will be longer. So what idea do you have, Sam? Check this out, okay? You're going to use your comb. Now, you, you got this on video, so I would suggest, you know, what you do is take your iPad and videotape this. So you can get it right now if you want. Or if you're, not, you're on your computer, take your phone out and videotape it. But we will repost this later. You can go back and watch it. All right, watch me pick up a section, this section that I cut. Okay, now watch me come out and bring it out to my guide. There's my guide. I'm going to fold my fingers so you can see what I'm going to do. Watch how I'm going to take the top angle of that because that's what I'm measuring, that top. I'm going to slide my thumb down to that. The tip of my thumb is the length. Now I simply come here. I'm going to elevate this horizontally. Watch. I'll give you a back view of how I'm doing this. There we go. A little three-quarter. Okay. I pulled this out horizontally. Did I not? I leave my finger flat against her head. Now I slide this out. As soon as it hits the thumb, there is my guide. And now trust it and cut it and then readjust. So that's my guide. Now let's come back through. Let's elevate up. Okay. See where that short piece is underneath? That's what I'm going to adjust to. I don't adjust to the thickness of the section. It's that short piece underneath that you have, okay, that you're adjusting to. Okay, now come back through. And if you want, grab a section. And then just come back through and just get another feel for that. So you know how I'm doing what I'm doing? I'm just coming back through. I guarantee you when a client sees you do this, what I've discovered is there's a little bit more sense of relief or confidence and you'll see that my angle what happened sam my angle was too far out this way okay give you a square view it needs to be dangled in angled in i love my length on the top but i need to angle that in all right so i really think that when a client sees you do this it's incredible because they feel that confidence they're going well i've never seen anybody measure like this and it shows that you're measuring with really intent 
See, clients can read our body language, and that's so important. So measure, my friends, measure. And measure using the comb, not necessarily just your fingers, grabbing one from the opposite side. Now I'm going to come through. Notice how look at me fold. See, there's my guide. I elevate till I get to that. Once I've done that, by doing that, that sets up my over direction, my elevation, everything. Watch again. Slightly diagonal back. Sam, how thick are your sections? Your thickness of your sections are based upon the density. So you always base that on density. Look how I elevate. So watch. I'm going to fold this so you can really see. See, there's my guide. You can see my guide. I get my hand out of the way. Now what I do is I float up and back till I get to it. Once I'm there, that puts me in proper elevation, proper over direction, and proper finger angle. Those three movements are so consistent. I don't care where you learn to cut. We're always, all of us, are elevating, over directing, or placing our finger angle at some position or angle as we do a haircut. Okay? Continue to come through. And then once again, if you find your comb gets in the way, here's a little trick. Just come through. We'll come coming through into that length. Take this, place it upon the pad of your thumb and index finger, and now just close through. Okay, coming through now, here, diagonal back. All right, come through. Anybody ever cut themselves? I just did. Oh, such is the nature of what we do. All right, coming through. So that tells you these shears were sharp, right? All right, there. And now, look how I'm just working right. See how I just changed my hand? Just like that, okay? Coming through, diagonal back. Now watch. Watch how I'm going to start to cross. This is so cool. If there's any lesson I want you to get out of this, for those of you watching, say, oh, he's just cutting a layered haircut. I want you to watch how I'm cutting this layered haircut. That's the learning lesson here, is how am I cutting this? Okay, and it's this crisscrossing pattern that I'm working with that really just goes through. I bet you a lot of you are going there, out there going, oh, wow, he cuts his hand too. Hey, I'm a human, human being too. You know, I make mistakes or I bleed just like you too. <laughs> All right. Getting my hair out of the way, but notice the sectioning now, okay? And notice where I'm at as I'm working. Hold on, guys. So notice where I'm at as I'm working and what I'm doing. What's important is my combing. If there's any tool, listen to what Sam's about to tell you. If there's any tool that gets us in trouble, it's called the comb. And it's because of, look at that, oh, look at, see, that's that corner I'm talking about. Now watch me take corners off. But it's the comb. It's where we comb the hair to. So always remember, I want you to just do an exercise and comb and always remember, if you let go of that hair, your hands will come to the center of your body, no matter where you're at. So you have to understand your body position is so critical aside from the comb and where you're combing the hair too. So combing is so consistent. I spoke to some students this morning and I told them, look, while you're at home, pick up that comb and just start combing hair. Pick a mannequin and just comb it a hundred times. Flip the comb a hundred times. So you're understanding why teeth, fine teeth. Here we go. Come through. Now look at me crisscrossing, guys, and watch how this corner in that center, watch. What I love about this by crisscrossing, it's going to give you a guide at that top end and a guide at that bottom end. That's what's so critical. So I come through. Look at See now? Look at So I'm going to cut from that point to that point, and look at the corner I'm eliminating. You can just start to see that corner. This is what I absolutely love about this concept. And it just really, as you go through, you can just start to see what I created and just a movement that you got out of that. If you learned something there on that underneath, just give me a yes, okay? And you can just start to see. Now, massage these mannequins. It's not a human, but look at me massage. And now I can really read my layering. I can really see it and read it. And if there's any edges, Sam, what would you do? I'd come back in with a blending shear and just tap those edges. That's what I would do. So just once again, a pixie that has a little bit of extra length to it in terms of how I'm cutting this particular pixie. But once again, it's this crisscross method that I want you to remember as I'm working with this. And these sections, if you follow me over here, they were going back this way. Okay, I elevated and then over-directed the previous section. Elevated, over-directed the previous section. So my elevation was horizontal. So now if I take a look at this section, it's horizontal, that's what I cut. And my, and my angle was actually, excuse me, my angle was short to long this way. It's been a long week, long month, a long six weeks. Okay, that's the elevation that I cut, and this is the angle that I cut. Okay, my over direction. 
was to each previous section. So that became my guide. That next section was over to it. I came right out from where that head grows. You come right to that. So this is the over direction. And this continued even as I worked to that center back. I just kept doing the same thing. And then I stopped at about the corner of the head and then started over again on this side. So by over, direct, by over directing to a previous section, what's happening is you're building a subtle increase in length. By doing that, I've discovered, rather than cutting straight out from the head, I've discovered that what I get is I get a little bit more movement in there. Okay, any questions before I move into the top? All right. Okay, yes. Erica, I highly recommend it, my dear. Erica Krauss, do it on a mannequin right after this because it's fresh in your mind. And I also think that once you do it, you're going to find you'll get it to work your own way. As I said, at the brand San Fia, we're not here to dictate that a pixie has to be cut this way. This is just one way to go in and do that. All right, let's go through now that top area. But what I like to do now when I get to these top areas, I like to blow dry them. Okay, so I'm actually going to blow dry this top area. Why, Sam? Because I want to be able to see what it is that I'm going to cut, that cutting edge. So now as I dry, let me just talk to you about dry cutting. Okay, see dry cutting is an exercise for the salon professional. It's not meant for the benefit of the client. It is meant for the benefit of the client. But what I mean by that is it's for the salon professional so that you can start to see immediately the cutting edge and the result that you're getting. So that's why we started to cut hair a little bit more on a natural, uh, excuse me, on a dry cutting basis. So that you, could, you could control the weight, the edge, and you could immediately visually see it in terms of what it does. So I think that's important. To understand dry cutting. Now let's talk about shears. When we made our shears, the dry cutting shears, there's a reason why I made it. A lot of you out there that follow me, you've actually seen me use the dry cutting shear. You've actually seen me use the dry cutting shear on wet hair. The concept of the dry cutting shear is it's a longer blade and it has more weight to it. Therefore, a sword blade. So what we wanted to do was give you a shear that's specifically meant for dry cutting. What I discovered was I was using the same shear on every cut. When the hair is dry, it's not as supple. So your shear works twice as hard to get through it. When the hair is wet, it's so supple, the shear cuts right through it. But dry, it has to work harder. Therefore, that said, what was happening was the edges were getting, of the shears were getting duller quicker. And you had to send them in a lot more. When I started dry cutting, my shear was going in maybe four times a year versus three or two times a year when I was doing completely everything wet. So what I wanted to do was give you a tool that you had the option to pick up. And yes, it's an investment, but imagine the investment sending your shears in and back and waiting for them. I really believe that, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I am a doctor of hair. I'm not a medical doctor, but I consider myself a salon professional that I have a lot of knowledge inside between my two ears. And what I want people to understand is that your tools are important, you know, using the same tool on everything. A shear has it gives you a different edge, it gives you a blocked off edge. A razor gives you more of a sliced edge. So sometimes you want to alter that fabric. We talk about fine hair in terms of how we want to alternate fine hair. And the way that we alternate fine hair is you go through and fine hair, we all know it locks, lacks volume, it lacks body. So if we go through and we damage it, that's right, damage it, but good damage, we highlight it. And so you highlight fine hair, it changes the fabric, and therefore it has more body to it. So what's so important to understand is, guys, what's the end result? What's the priority? Find out what's the priority of the client. Well, Sam, I cannot chemically afford to have my hair highlighted. All right, then I want you to have techniques within your arsenal that you can pull out that are going to alter the fabric of the hair. Go back and look at one of our videos where I went through and I talked about texturizing, cutting techniques. I talked the what, the how, the why, and the when you would be using those techniques. So go back in our video archive and look at that. If you don't subscribe to our YouTube channel, please subscribe to that. Okay? So now, Sam, you're bald right. Guys, I got to tell you something. When you get back to song, this is an opportunity to reset your button. Reset your button and your voice, your communication skills, and your skill set also. I would recommend you start blow drying as you go so that you can start to change the experience. Or if you choose to cut wet all the way through, then I'm going to suggest you take a monkey tripod, place it on the station, grab the client's phone, and videotape 
you teaching the client how to blow dry her hair. Actually handling her the tools and asking her to wrap dry it and maneuvering her hands around. Can you imagine when the appointment service is done, you create an experience by simply handing her phone back to her, you're getting her her own blow dry tutorial and she's the star. Tell her to place it on the vanity every morning, turn the video on, and you're there with her every morning teaching her how to blow dry. Give me a thumbs up if you're with that one. Guys, you've got to go back with new information in terms of how to go through this. Okay, now, what I want you to do is, at the end, somebody remind me, and I'll let you take pictures of these. But we also are posting our flip charts, and yes, Andrew, I'll get those to you, buddy. I haven't forgotten about that. So we're also posting our flip charts, and the show must go on, so those are posted, too. All right, blow drying, Sam, what did you do? I did more or less a wrap dry. Look how I just wrap it around the head and follow that. So it gives me a smooth kind of polished finish. Notice I'm not working with a round brush. And I'm not working with a round brush because I know I'm going to take it short. The round brush is just going to encourage it to pop up. Let the way that I'm about to cut this pop that up in terms of on its own. All right, so let's talk about the top. Sam, how are you going to cut it? I'm going to cut it very conventional, but I'm going to switch my tool in terms of what I'm going to use. So the tool that I'm going to use when I cut this, I'm going to use the invisible shoes. Okay? If you watch me on the show, let's go on. I really find I'm picking up and using my tools in different ways to get to the end result. You know, I was never trained to cut a full haircut with a blending shear. And about two weeks ago, or a week ago, the show must go on, I did the entire haircut with a blending shear. So, you know, guys, it's just a matter of what works for you. Remember, I'm not here to say one way is right or you know, to affect your belief system, because a lot of people are going to tell me, I was not cut to, taught to do that, Sam. I was taught to do it with a razor. Well, things change. You know, we were taught precision, and we started texturizing here. So things didn't blend, but what's power important was balance and function. So if you ask me, Sam, what's important in a haircut today? Balance and function. What bothers me is when people at salons pick up a haircut, and they go, wow, who cut your hair last? That's not, that's unnecessary. Let's support each other. That's so important. All right, so watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to come through, and I want to eliminate all my length with the invisible ends. Let's talk about an invisible. Okay, I used the blender down below. Then I came back in very much with discipline, showed you how to crisscross that back. Now, these are invisible ends. I know I want this to have some pop and texture. Okay, so why go in and cut this blunt, then come back through and texturizing everything? What I would recommend is use a tool. I'm going to lower so you can see me work through, the, through that top bottom. Okay, Lisa, why paddle brush instead of Denman type? I like working with a paddle brush because it's giving me a little bit more um, uh, space in which to work with. It's a wider, bigger brush. When I want a really smooth, polished effect, I'll pick up a Denman. Meaning my, my, like this particular plug right here, that's Denman. Okay? So when something has a little, wants a little bit more polish, this I want a little bit more loose. So I get the stretch I want. But with a Denman, with that rubber base, you get that really good polish. Now, I can get that if I flip this with a paddle, but I would rather wrap dry with a paddle. And then I would rather go in and blow my wedges, my fireflies, my anything that has geometric polish, that needs a geometric polish to it, I'll work with a Denman. So thanks for asking that, Lisa, because I think you really have to understand your brushes and the end result of all the brushes. Now, watch after I cut this, I'm going to pick up. So it's just a matter of where do I want to take my length. So I'm going to find where the hair pivots from. You can call it a calic, whatever you want. Find where it pivots from. Once I'm there, I'm going to start in the center back. Grab a section. Now, here is my length underneath. Let's take a look at that. Okay, got my black shirt behind it. Right here's my length. So I'm not going to blend this through to that. Okay, what I want to do is I just want to overlap that just slightly. Now, this is up to your discretion in terms of how much you, over, how, how much you overlap. Now, all I'm doing is I'm just coming through, and I'm just going to slice. Now, watch me get my length, but watch me get a really soft edge. Look how I can go inside, take out weight, and look how I just got just a really soft blend there. Okay, So even though that this is disconnected or detached from the underneath here, it just gives me a soft blend. So now, I hope you can understand why. I'm going to pivot my sections. Hope you can understand why now I've gone through and I dried this. By drying this, I can see that edge. I can see what it is I want to create. And then I can comb down immediately and just start to see the softness in that. So I don't see any kind of line in that. So these are invisible. And Sam, what's the difference? What's the difference between an invisible blend and the blending shear? 
All right, let's talk about that for a moment. Now, I still got to follow a guide. Don't take such a big section that I can't see where my guide is. Here it is here. Okay? But I am leaving leg. Look how soft I'm leaving this. So let's talk about the invisible end. The blending shear or thinning shear, that blocks off the edge, but it leaves lengths of hair in between. When I pick up the blending shear, this blade has been over-polished. Okay, placing my finger on it and just rub it back and forth. So it's not going to cut me. So what, because it's slightly over-polished, what it does is it pushes the hair. So as I'm closing, I'm getting curved scallops versus rectangle squares, if you will, or blocked off edges. That's what I love about this. Why did you make this, Sam? Because I knew we were going to start to layer hair. And what's the number one issue with layering hair? The number one fabric that I have a problem layering with, I'm not perfect, guys, is blondes. How many of you out there see blondes? You see the layers when you go through and you actually cut them. Okay. Well, this shear will eliminate that. So if you're doing your shags on these blondes and then you're coming back through and you're spending 10, 15 minutes to texturize, to texturize, slice, whatever it is you're doing in terms of technique, I would highly, highly recommend an invisible. And you can just see how quickly I'm getting that length off back in that area there. So really, you know, I'm not here to sell, guys, but I just want you. A lot of people ask, what are you using? Why are you using that? So I think, you know, tools. Understand the limits and capabilities of your tool, just like a surgeon has to understand the limits and capabilities of the tools they have, different types of length of scalpels or different weights of scalpels, things like that. So now look at look at just the softness that I'm getting out of that. The response that I get out of that immediately is just amazing. So I'm not spending a lot of time. Sectioning. I'm working around and pivot, and I'm pivoting from that point where everything came from, which is that whole uh, calic area, that that swirl that happens. Find that, comb everything out from that, and then come through. Now, look, I just keep chiseling until I get, angle that blade slightly, come in, slice, and pull out. A lot of people said this shear is like cutting with a razor. You know, it's hard for me to believe that, but you get really softness like you would with a razor. That's what's so cool about that. Now, if you wanted to leave length in the middle, or excuse me, <laughs> in the face frame area in the front, you're going to start to angle. So even though I'm slicing, I'm going to use, think about what you want to do in this front area. So if you want to leave length, think about the angle. So what I'm trying to share with you, just don't pick up a shear and cut it and cut, cut it square. Think about where you want your length. That's important. Why not just use a normal shear? Lisa, you could use a normal shear, but then I'm going to have to come back in and texturize, slice, pick up a pair of texting shears. I'm doing two things at once, eliminating the length and texturizing at the same time. Lisa, that's why I'm choosing to do it this way. I choose to, I'm choose. i going to choose to excite myself and do things in a different way. So, Lisa, you could certainly come in. Remember, we're not here to say what's right or wrong. You could certainly come in, cut this all blocked off, even, precise. But then again, to get the movement or texture that you want, you're going to pick up a texture technique or a texture shear and go back and place it in. I find this is another way. Remember what I said, another way to go and approach this. You say your invisible plan, no, the, you say your invisible plan is reversible. When and why would you reverse the shear? Beth, the reversible blender, the thinning shear, that's reversible. That's reversible. The invisible blend is basically, it's not a reversible. All right. Now let me explain to you the reversible blender, why I made that reversible. Okay. When I was sent to Malaysia to work in a salon for 30 days, I was, I'm, work, was, I'm still working with Redken. They sent me there to a salon, and they were becoming a Redken salon. So I was in Malaysia for 30 days training these people. What I discovered was when they picked up their blending shear, that's the blending shear, a thinning shear, when they went to cut a bob, they cut it blunt. Then they went back in the bob, held the length, and about an inch above it, they went like this. What they told me, I said, why are you doing They said, Sam. We just placed a blunt line underneath. Now it's textured on top. Now this bob will go under easier. Remember, this is Asian hair. Then they flipped it up the other way, and the blunt blade was on top, and they would close. I go, why would you do that? The blunt blade, the blockness is on top. Now when this client hits it with a brown brush, brush, which she does all the time, now that hair will simply flip up. So that was a discovery for me. But they didn't have a shear that was reversible. So they were holding it in the wrong way because it was an offset handle. This is an even set handle. The thumb blade is on both sides, so it's made for you to reverse. So you can reverse, your hand goes in comfortably. Reverse, your hand goes in comfortably. So it's a matter, let me give it to you the most simple way. The direction the teeth are pointed is the direction the hair is going to move. Boom, it's going to move down. 
If the teeth are pointed up and I go and texturize around the length, it's going to pop up. Let's go up here. If I go through here, then that hair is going to have a natural tendency, a little bit more easier to move back. So that's why it's a reversible blender. Once again, something I discovered many moons ago, maybe 20 years ago, made a note of it. And when I made shears, I thought, let's make it reversible. You know, the engineer shears engineer, those guys were like, what? You want to make it what? Why? And I explained why, and they were like, oh, okay, now we understand the why. I hope that helps you out, Lisa, in understanding, you know, why, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, who asked that question in regards to why um, you want to reverse a blender. Why one way and why another way. Okay, now look at when I touch that, okay? Look at the volume I'm getting out of that immediately, just touching it. And I'm going through, Lisa, eliminating the length and texturizing at the same time. So I find it just helps me to get to the end result in a very effective quality way, but it's helping save time. And what I'm trying to do is just give you, help you another way to approach a pixie to help you save time. Sam, every time you cut this, you close this out. You go through and you close it out. You slide out. Yes, I do. Every time. And that way, it just gives me that soft edge. What about lengths that you're going to miss, Sam, the lengths that you miss? Are you going to get all the hair? Guys, relax. Anytime I want something textured, I have to relax my mindset. I have to relax my mindset. If I don't relax my mindset, then what happens? Everything's going to get too stiff. So I need to relax in here. I hold on to what I have, which is my fundamentals. But to create a softer shape, we need to relax. All right? Coming through now. Following my guide. Remember what I said. Even though I'm taking off the length, I have a guide that I'm following through. Now. Okay? Look how I come through, and I'll, I'll just come through more vertically to it just to soften those edges even more. See, there's times when you're doing it this way that I like that I might say, okay, I'm going to leave, you know, a little piece here. And that happens creatively as you go, guys. Not here to dictate. Have you enjoyed today? Just give me a, a yes if you have, guys, in regards to the comments. Give me a thumbs up, throw a heart, whatever it is that you want to throw at me. All right, so now watch. Let's take, take a look. Now I need to go back in and I need to check this. What do you mean? Well, I can't, when you texturize, guys, remember, texture is all visual and feel. But I've discovered when I work with blending shears or when I work with my Invisiblends, I find there's maybe excess lengths here that I've got. So what I want to do is just show you, this is when I will come back in and I'll pick up the seven inch drive, okay? And all I'm doing now is just refreshing, watch this. So I lift and I come through, I see any erratic ends that I want really off that are just flying away floating on their own, come through and take those off, okay? So what would cause that, Sam? That would be the spaces in between that invisible. But I'm not going back in and cutting this blunt. All I want to do is get those excess links that might be out here compared to where I am, get some of these off. So then you keep the edge, excuse me, you keep the edge very, very soft. I guess I'm supposed to give that one away. All right, come through. And then if you see more weight, you feel I want to go more and deeper, go into it. So you see how I use the Invisiblend? I think it was Lisa. See how I use the Invisiblend? Then I come back in with a bunch here. So I'm just sort of reversing my thinking, if you will, versus going in blunt, then coming back in and, and texturizing. I find another way to do it, which keeps me excited, keeps me motivated and stimulated behind the chair. Continue to do the things you do, and you will continue to get the same results. Do things in another different way. Discover things in another different way. It's amazing the results you're going to get. So now notice how I'm at at my end, at my blow dry. I did the blow dry as I, uh, before I cut that top, and you can just start to see where I'm at with that in terms of an end result. Okay, product of choice. I'm going to tend to go in more with a paste. So let's work with my Redken Rough Paste 12. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'll show you a little trick. On these short little haircuts, and this is a great little trick to do with the guys. Okay, let's take some of the paste. I'm going to put it in a cap. Okay. What I discover with a paste, or sometimes with the guys with a pomade, they tend to apply it, but they don't emulsify enough, and then you get little white little spots or cakes of the product in there. So what I'm going to suggest is just blow dry this, turn on the heat, and melt the paste down. Okay? And show this to the client. It's these added little value tips that are really going to help clients out when they go through and they're working. Okay? So you can see now, watch. When I emulsify this now, look how soft that is. So it's not so pasty and so heavy. Now emulsify. Now look, I use it as a hand lotion. 
And the reason I do that is watch when I rake my hands through, some of that hair is on top of my hand. And oh, keep your hand in your body. Look at the response I'm getting out of that. See, that's what's great about this. This has length on top. A lot of people tend to think that a pixie needs to be short on top when it really doesn't need to be that short on top. Okay, just stepping to see. All right, great. All right. So now take a look at that. All right. Look how simple and easy that was. Let's recap it so you can kind of get the idea of what I did. All right. Here we go. Here she is here. I'll put it right there. All right. Let's take a look at the section over here. I took a, a solid line. After you establish that solid line, come back in and zigzag it. From vertical transition, that's where that starting point of that horseshoe works. Adjust that height of that based upon density you're working with. Okay. Once I got my section, the first area I cut was the nape area. And I came into that nape area, elevated up, got rid of my length, came back through with a texture shear, working just like scissor over comb. That's the nape area. That eliminated all of that hair underneath. Quick way to do that. Okay, that is my elevation. Now let's come to the side area. Okay, let's come over here. Okay, now you can start to see what I did was I started in the front. Here's my elevation horizontal. I was slightly on a diagonal. Then what we did was we started diagonal, elevate, over direct to previous, over direct to previous, over direct to previous. That's looking from the top view. That's the over direction of each section. Here's the learning lesson today. Whenever you work, if you choose to work all the way down and not divide this name, get into this pattern of crisscrossing. Meaning when you get to the center, that's the last angle. Now come back across till you get to the center. That's the last angle. Now work by crisscrossing, you're taking all of that weight out in the center. You're not having to go back into that horizontally. Did you enjoy today? Did you get something out of today? I hope that you did and that you were able to walk away with something, a cut that you already do. I know that. But simply, I hope that you're walking away with just another way to do this in terms of how we're going through and approaching our cuts. And once again, at San Villa, we just really want to continue to light a fire, not necessarily underneath you, but light a fire inside of you.